Ratchet and Clank 3. It's always been one of my favorite games of all time, but not my most played Ratchet and Clank game for a stupid reason. OCD of having to play the games in order. So I'd play the first one, I'd play the second one, and I'd take interest in something else or another game before I played the third game. By the way, this is why I talk about Ratchet 3 right away. <laughs> to fight my urges to start with the first iteration. Anyways, I consider this game as the ultimate Ratchet and Clank game. First one was new and brought down the basics. Second one tried to innovate with weapons and gadgets and new gameplay. As for the third one, it's just the perfect PS2 game. It has everything. Characters we know and love, gameplay that had two previous attempts to reach perfection. Honestly, Insomniac just had a solid comprehension of what their player base wanted and made the closest piece of video game art possible. Now, to play this game, I had to record it on the HD remaster from the PS3 and Holy, I forgot how annoying it is to record gameplay from this beast. Basically, because of the HDCP copyright thing, the console won't let you record with the classic HDMI stuff, so you need special cables, a previous generation Elgato thingy, that also forced you to put delay on your microphone and the camera if you wanted the commentary to match the recording, and so many other annoying details. I did all this, and it shows how much I want to start recording on this beast. <laughs> Okay, so as a kid, Ratchet was my successor to Crash. It was the cool mascot that fit the fact that I got older, and as much as I still loved Crash, Ratchet was also badass. He had guns and a cool wrench. Uh, he cracked jokes and he was on the PS2. Again, we were a Sony household. And yes, even though I got Game Boys to mostly play Pokemon games, I didn't own any other console brand until the Wii. The game starts with Ratchet and Clank going back to Veldin, Ratchet's home to defend the planet against the Terranoids, a new menace that took on the galaxy. We managed to clean up the invasion and get a transmission from the president. Apparently the evil Dr. Nefarious is behind all this and we're tasked to travel to Florana to find the only man who ever managed to defeat Nefarious. Obviously, if you played the previous games, you know it's Quark and when we find him, he attacks us. Defeating him makes him go insane and he acts like a monkey. Ratchet brings Quark along to the Phoenix, the pride of the galactic fleet. The captain is Sasha, who also appears to be the president's daughter. As we get to the bridge, another transmission from the president shows the capital planet Marcadia is now the new target of Nefarious. Ratchet doesn't lose any time and we fly to the rescue. The last part of the stage is a series of challenges that introduces the player to what the multiplayer looks like, but we'll get back to it later. It's a bit long, but it makes good money and it's absolutely not bugged. I'm okay. <laughs> we save the day and meet Al, the genius dude that we already know him. Turns out he has a video game of Quark that could help him remember who he was. And we head back to the Phoenix to try it out. It's a fun little platformer and we get to play as Quark against the ghost pirates. The plan works and Captain Quark remembers everything. For the time he adjusts, Sasha has a mission for us. Participate in the Annihilation Nation TV show to win a holo disguise of a Tyranoid. That could be really helpful in the future. Let's meet tonight's victim! Oops, I mean, contestant! Fred! Fred is a Gadgetron accountant who claims he once had a Morpho Ray go off in his pants! What a chair! Good luck, Fred! <laughs> Next! We get it, and decide to stay a bit longer to make tons of bold by succeeding the trials and challenges the show offers. I'm dead. I'm not. I'm dead. Oh! Oh, I'm so lucky. <laughs> I would have I would have won anyways. No big deal. Back on the Phoenix, it seems Quark has assembled a team. The Q Force. Welcome to the Q Force! The team consists of Al, Skid McMarks, and Helga, characters we know well again from previous games. And of course Ratchet, Clank. Sasha and the Nidian monkey. Quark's plan is to infiltrate Nefarious's secret base on planet Aquados. Of course, giving all the dirty and dangerous jobs to Ratchet. Before we head out, I make sure to play the second episode of Quark Holovit game, and we get a call from what appears to be Clank's agent. Oh yeah, uh, Clank is an actor now, and he plays the famous Agent Clank on the TV show with the same name. Of course, he's too busy to come film with the crew, and we arrive on Aquados. We're gonna need Skid's help to progress inside the secret base. Especially because he has a hacker. Convenient to infiltrate such a place. Ratchet and his Q-Force teammate make their way in the sewers tunnels full of amibs and robots who only seem to target Ratchet. Anyway, we clean the way for Skid to hack the doors and get to swim in the probably very clean water. There is something wrong with some of the tunnel's robots. They seem to be stuck in some kind of space-time rift. What? Where'd they go? Huh? So when I 
go down. How about when I'm halfway up? But it's okay, we managed to help them get unstuck. We finally reached the final elevator where we reunite with an old friend, Slim Cognito. What are you doing down here? I had a small run-in with the cops concerning a suck cannon upgrade that was mistakenly sold to a miner. I swear the kid looked 18. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Don't remember this. <laughs> we definitely get why he's hiding out here, and because of our PS2 saves, we get three weapons from Going Commando, the mini turret glove and the lava gun. The only way to go forward now is for our team to split up. So Clank goes inside the vent while Ratchet puts on his Tira guys. <laughs> Clank gets a brand new gadget, the banana gun, which helps him direct orders to the monkey from afar. With it, we can trigger buttons and distract the security cameras. Unfortunately, the path ends and it's time for Ratchet to use of his social skills. The Tira guys is pretty simple to use. It's basically a rhythm game. Succeeding at the QTE sequences will trigger the right dialogue while failing at them will craft insults. We open a few doors and talk our way towards the bridge command, allowing Clank to continue. An old game mechanic is back with the return of the gadget bots. These little guys listen to Clank's orders without question. So they destroy some obstacles and unlock doors, while the monkey distracts the camera some more. After a series of platform levels and socializing with the enemy as a tyrant shit, we reunite the duo inside Nefarious's office. They find a complete collection of Agent Clank's holovids. It's like Nefarious is Clank's number one fan for some reason. And they also find an encrypted star map. Before getting back to the Phoenix, we have to swim through some more of the sewers and meet with another old friend, again. Basically, the sewers have 99 sewer crystals laying around and each of them can be sold for 2000 bolts to this guy. It's a great way to make some money early on. We get a closer look to Nefarious' reaction to Quark infiltrating his secret hideout. Penetrated. Impossible! If you say so, sir, they apparently stole some sort of data disk. Who is responsible for this outrage? I believe it was a Captain Quark or something. Quark! Oh, Janice, you will always be the love of my life. You really should have that looked at. Quark! And back on the Phoenix, Quark congratulates himself on the success of his plan. Thanks to the map we found, we now know where the Tyranids come from. He decides to attack their planet with another genius plan where Ratchet gets all the dangerous action. We parachute down on Tyrannosis, fight off hordes of aliens and get ourselves a buggy to easily navigate on the desertic planet. Ratchet is tasked to destroy the four plasma cannon turrets and lead the assault on the enemy base. In there, we are welcomed by a huge Tyranoid monster with many eyes and big guns mounted on his back. During the fight, there's a cool phase where he's chasing you and you get to see from his point of view while you run away. Ratchet defeats the monster and as usual, Quark gets all the credit for our work. Sasha invites us to come back to the Phoenix. But before doing so, just like on Markaria, we get a handful of missions with the Galactic Rangers to earn a good amount of bolts. We even get to fly a ship, even though the aim is awkward, it's super worth it and very fun. We tell of the events on Tyrannosis to Sasha and Skid before getting interrupted by Dr. Nefarious himself. He threatens the group and even says that he has a special treatment for Agent Clank before logging off. Alright Lawrence, you can turn it off now! Oh, may I sir? What a treat. Al backtracks the signal to Tax, and it seems like Nefarious' weapon facility on that planet is preparing a dangerous super weapon to unleash onto the galaxy. Ratchet volunteers to check it out and gets new gadgets including a hacker and a hypershot. I make it to Dax and quickly realize the difficulty has been up the notch. The flying robots are really hard to fight without a rocket launcher, which costs a whopping 135,000 bolts. I then decide to get back to the sewers and earn enough money to buy that weapon. After some time, we can finally afford the missiles and it's indeed much smoother now. Okay. <laughs> I get it. On Dax, we obtain the charge boots, which can make Ratchet dash forward, as well as a computer used to edit the latest Courtney Gears music video. Oh, let's watch it! I, I mean, you know, it may contain a clue or something.
We watched the music clip and realized she could be teaming up with Nefarious. We can talk to her if we go back and win the big challenge again on Annihilation Nation. She'll be handing the prize. On Dax, we also go down the way that I thought was so hard as a kid. If I do it first try, that means that I was really bad when I was a kid, which is not impossible. Turns out, I just wasn't that good at video games, I guess, and gain access to Nefarious' ultimate evil plan, a weapon called the Bio-Bliterator. Clank tracks down a large vessel, which left the facility recently, and we get coordinates to the Obani moon system, which we'll be exploring next, along with Skid, who insists about backing us up. Grab my gear and meet you there! I don't know, no, no, no! Great. 